Hey everybody, it's me, Kristen. I'm here again with another video on Python within the context of Jython environment for students. In the last video, we did a short, easy program that introduced to you the concept of data and specifically a certain type of data, strings. We took a program that took three strings and added each string onto the end of one another and then printed out the strings. So here's a copy of that program that we did together. Um, and just so we're all clear, when I say data, that means a unit of inf information. Data can be lots of things, including strings. So let's talk about the different types of data. So as we mentioned, we have strings. Strings are what's called character data. And that just means it involves characters like the alphabet or non-alphabetical characters as well would be included here. And you denote strings with quotes. Um, single quotes or double quotes can denote a string. Numeric data is another kind of data. So we've got character data and numeric data. Some examples of numeric data are integers and floating point numbers. So integers are whole numbers. And when you add, subtract, multiply, and divide with integers, they if you use exclusively integers, your numbers will always be rounded down. So if you, if you say 23 divided by 5, you're not going to get like 4 point yada 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 yada. You're going to get 4 if you use integers only. With floating point numbers, we have decimals and we do not round. So a float can be added, multiplied, divided, or subtracted just like an integer. And when you do so with floats, you would get decimal values. Um, so yeah. What can you do with data? Well, with strings, we've already seen some of the things that you can do with strings. I've shown you concatenation, which is the what you see on the screen here with the this plus is plus a plus string. Uh, you can also do what's called repetition, and that's essentially multiplying strings. And when you multiply a string by a number, that just repeats the string however many times the number would indicate, as you can see in the example on the page. There's a little bit more complex stuff that you can do with strings that gets pretty useful the more that you learn it's called slicing slicing is when you take a string and you use brackets with a number between the brackets to indicate which index you're looking at so if you put in a value of zero that's going to be the first the first slot in the string so in this case of the word flower the zeroth of flower is f and yeah, and the, so the way you do it is here I've got a very simplified example where I'm literally taking the string itself and putting the brackets right next to it. But you could also do this with a variable. So I could store the word flower in a variable A and then do this same exact thing with that variable instead of with the full string. And you will see examples of that going forward. And if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. Just it'll make sense later. And then there's also called something called slicing, which is well, range slicing, which is the same thing as a normal slice, except you have a start and a stop value. And something to note here is that the stop value is what's called exclusive. So you're always going to go down one from the stop value. So here we have flower with the start value being one and the stop value being three. So one is equal to the letter L. Okay. And then we know that two would be zero, would be the letter O and three would be the letter W. Because range slicing is exclusive, we look at W and then we move back one. So that's how we get LO instead of LOW here with this range from one to three. Okay. Let's talk about what you can do with numeric data. You can do math. So you can do addition and subtraction. Something to note is that if you are doing math with a, an integer and a float, your result is going to be a float. And you can see that here with the examples on the screen with 1.3 plus 5 equals 6.3 um, and 6 minus 2.1 equals 3.9. Uh, you can see there that the answer is a floating point number when you, yeah. You can also do multiplication and division. Um, and again here, if you multiply or divide between a whole number or it, I mean an integer and a float, your answer is going to be a float. And note here down with that very last example where I divide 44 by 2.2. Okay, so technically 44 divided by 2.2 is 20 flat. Okay, since 
we put a float in here at the start, 2.2, our answer is going to have a decimal point in it even though it's a whole number because that decimal is how Jess communicates to you and me that it is a float and not an integer. So just keep that in mind, okay? So let's get into some examples now that I've talked to you about what you can do with different kinds of data. Let me show you. So here we have a pretty fun problem. We're gonna pick a two digit number, multiply the first digit by five, add three to the answer and double it, then add to the answer the second digit of the original number and subtract six. And we should get the same number at the end that we started with. That's how we'll know we did it right. So with any programming thing, the first thing you wanna do is break it down into plain English steps. So that's what I've done. I read this first question and I split it out into actual numeric steps. So the first thing in my point of view that we need to do here is pick our two digit number and identify the first and second digit. We're gonna use the first digit in the second step and then we'll use the second digit later. And then, so once you've picked your number, the next thing you wanna do is multiply the first digit by five and then you're gonna add three. Then you'll double the result that you got from step three. And then in step five, we're gonna add the second digit that we identified up in 1B to the result of step four, and then we'll subtract six. So that's how you do this problem broken down into steps. Let's code it. Okay. We're gonna call this math fun, and our variable is gonna be A. So, is we look in our in our steps here, the first thing we need to do is identify the first digit. So I'm gonna write hashtag step one, identify digits. Okay, and so first digit is gonna be equal to A. And remember what we said about slicing. When you slice, the if you want the first letter in something, you have to use the number zero to identify the first one. So we're gonna say A, zero to get the first digit and to get the second digit we're going to say a one because one is actually going to be the second digit okay and now something that you want to keep in mind here is we're going to be multiplying these numbers so we probably want to store them as numbers as of right now they're being stored as strings because we used slicing to get these so the way that I could make these be stored as numbers is if I put int around the value like this, okay? So now they're stored as integers and we can do math with them, okay? So step two, multiply first digit by five, okay? So that gives us, I'm gonna say step two, equals first digit times five. Okay, cool. Step three, add three. So step three, the variable is gonna be equal to step two, the variable plus three. Okay, step four is to double step three. So step four equals step three, times two, okay? Step five, add digit two to step four. Plus second digit, okay? Step six, subtract six, okay? And then our answer is gonna be what we get from step, step six. So I'll print that at the end. Okay, let's load this program. See if it works, okay? Math fun 16. Uh-oh, see how here I put in the number 16? This takes a string. So here's what I'm gonna do. There's two ways we could handle this. We could make it such that we just require you to put in a string as your value, 
or to make this program a little bit more um, useful, we're going to say a equals string of a up here. So what this means now is if I put in a number, an integer, the very first thing I do up here is tell it that a is a string. And so now it knows that um, that, uh, that it needs to treat it like a string. Okay, now see if I take that out again and I run the program again, I'll get an error. See here? Because what it says is that I'm trying to access a part of an object that doesn't exist. So here when I when I try to slice the variable a, if I don't tell Jess that the variable a is a string by doing this, it wants to treat the it wants to treat it like an integer because I didn't put quotes around it when I inputted it. So that's why that is. Okay, so let's just talk through the code or the program one more time. So we have our, our def line where we just say the name of the function and put in the variable that will be used in the parentheses, okay? First thing we do is say, hey Jess, letting it know that a is a string. Then we're going to identify the digits. So we slice a, and then we put the int modifier around a in order to tell Jess that now first digit has to be treated like an integer, okay? So int works the exact same way that str works, except oppositely. It converts from strings to integers, or floats to integers too. It'll round down. Um, second digit, we're doing the same thing here, int of the slice from a. And then from here, we just follow through the math. So I hope that makes sense to you. Okay. Now let's get into another example where we use exponentials and mod. So here's the example. You have a skein of fabric that is 50 inches by 90 yards, and you want to make kites with them. Each kite is going to be 50 by 50 inches. You want to know how many kites can be made and how many inches of fabric are going to be left over. So let's break this down into steps, okay? First thing I want to do is convert from 90 yards to inches. So we've got 90 yards times three feet in one yard equals 270 feet. And then we have 270 feet times 12 inches in one foot gives us 3,240 inches. Okay, so that's the number of inches we've got to work with here. We're gonna divide that by 50 to determine how many kites there are. And we're gonna do integer division here, which means we're rounding down because we only wanna make whole kites, not partial kites. So 3,240 inches divided by 50 inches equals 64 kites. How many inches are gonna be left over? Well, we can use the modulus function for this. So 3,240 kites mod 50 gives us 40 inches left over. Let me put this in Python for you guys, okay? This function has no variables in it, you might have noticed. And that's okay. So we've got step one. convert from yards to inches. So we've got 90 So I'm going to write inches here. I'm going to say inches equals 90 yards times 3 feet in a yard times 12 inches in a foot. That's going to give me 3,240 inches stored in this inches variable, okay? So now I want to know how many kites they're going to be. So that's going to be equal to inches over 50 and left over is going to be equal to 3,000 or is going to be equal to inches mod 50, okay? And um, with this example, if we have, I just want to use exponentials here. So let's just say, you know what, stop.
Okay. And then step four. For fun, we're going to also determine the area of the leftover fabric. So our leftover fabric, we want it to be a square kite still. So it's going to be equal to leftover times leftover, aka leftover squared. So that is using exponentials. And then let's print u you can make kites so that's kites is going to be a number there So now I'm just typing up basically the answers. So let's load this program to see if it gives me answers. Okay. What is the problem here, guys? I know what the problem is. You cannot concatenate string and integer objects. What did we forget to do? Well, in the above problems, we were very careful to make sure to tell Jess what things are integers and what things are strings, but we didn't really do that here. So. Let's go ahead and fix that. So we'll put str around kites here to make it a string so we can concatenate. Same thing here with leftover and same thing here with remainder area. So what we experienced here is called a runtime error, meaning our program could load, but it couldn't run. Try again. Yay, okay. 64 kites, 40 leftover, well, you have 40, let's, let's say, inches of fabric left over. And then the leftover fabric can make an area, a kite that has an area of 1,600. 1,600 inches squared, but that's close enough, honestly. there just because I like to have complete sentences and use units Ta -da! you may be asking yourself Kristen why would I do this in Python when I can clearly do it in um, in math well the answer is what if you had a more varied a more general question what if the question wasn't you have um, 90 yards of fabric that's 50 inches? What if it was X inches by Y yards and you wanted to make kites? You know, there, you, then that's where programming comes into handy. So let me just show you what that question could look like, okay? You, this is an example where it's the same as the previous problem, but we're using variables instead of numbers. And this is where programming comes in handy. So now you have a skein of fabric that's X inches by Y yards that you intend to make kites with. Each kite is cut from an A inch by A inch square fabric, meaning that it's each length is equal to A. How wants to know how many kites you can make and what the dimensions of the kite you can make with the leftover fabric if you need it to be a square kite with an integer length. So we did this example with the number 50 for X and 90 for Y um, with 50 for A. Um, but you could write this in Jython in such a way that you can plug in any values you want for x, y, and a, 
and still get all of the answers out of it. And so that is really where programming is powerful. Let's, let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm just going to be going through this and adding variables. So if we look at the question, it was there's, so we've got, well, a is really equal to x, so I'm going to leave x and a is equal, x inches, y yards, okay? So I'm going to write in here the comments, x is equal to length Okay, so step one, we have to convert yards to inches. So here, the yards value is y. Okay. And then here, the reason we divide by 50 is because we know the kites are supposed to be 50 inches long. But if we change that value, that needs to change. Same here. OK, so now the program is made general. So we can put this in for anything. So let's go with the original example which was, let's see, kites two. The original example was 50 inches and then 90 yards. You, so we still get the same answer here. So what if we had the same number of yards but it was 30 inches? Then we would have no fabric left over, okay? What if it was gonna be 30 inches with like 200 yards? Still wouldn't have any left over, apparently. What if we made these kites like 36 inches? Okay, what about 39 inches and 211 yards, just to make it weird. So you see now how we were able to take the program from specific numbers and make it into variables, and now we can solve for whatever we want. And so that's why programming is really useful. So as you can see, we took what was a pretty basic like math problem and made it into something that you can keep using. So for other for other values than the ones that you were given at the start of the problem. So I think that's where I'm going to end the video here. Thank you.